This essay example, as well as thousands of others, is available in text format on our website for free and without registration. Simply Google Ivy Panda Free Essays. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner Essay Introduction Samuel Taylor Coleridge's poem The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner fits within the Romantic literary style. In the poem, nature is represented as a powerful and inspiring force that is incomprehensible to humans who, in comparison to nature, have no power in influencing the world and what eventually occurs. In the dispute about nature in The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, there can be two contrasting opinions on the treatment of nature. On the one hand, environmentalists may be concerned with the way nature is treated by humans, while on the other, there is a spiritual perspective that nature is the embodiment of God, with which the mariner must reconcile. Power and Nature in Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner The rhyme of the ancient mariner begins with the description of a wedding feast, during which the mariner decided to tell his remarkable story. The scene then changes to the description of nature where the mariner is left alone to sail his ship. The ship was cheered, the harbor cleared, merrily did we drop, which signifies the positive outlook of the mariner on his upcoming adventures. Alone and away from civilization, the mariner is forced to battle against storms and other dangers of the ocean. A crucial moment to consider in the discussion about the role of nature in the poem is the mariner killing an albatross. Some can link this episode to the human desire to master nature, while for others, this act is spiritual. However, one must agree that nature in the poem has much more power over human beings than human beings have over nature. For instance, nature is so powerful that it forces the mariner and his sailors to suffer from intense thirst when they remain in desolate waters, water, water, everywhere, and all the boards did shrink, water, water, everywhere, nor any drop to drink. This shows that any attempts to become the master of nature are pointless, and the only thing that human beings can do is merely survive. Spirituality versus environmentalism, should they be separated? Concerning the idea of spirituality in the poem, the author depicts nature as an expression of the spiritual world. The author illustrates the close links between nature and spirituality in the sequence of unfortunate events that the mariner has to suffer after killing the albatross. In the poem, nature is the creation of God. Thus, when the mariner improperly interacts with nature and wants to gain power over it, he also challenges God. Therefore, attempts at harming nature are sins or moral failures since they question the authority and power of God. In the Christian perspective, sins lead to punishment, and in the poem, the penalty is supernatural, a combination of natural and spiritual, with polar spirits coming to haunt the mariner and his crew, and some in dreams assured were of the spirit that plagued us so, nine fathom deep he had followed us from the land of mist and snow. Apart from the polar spirits, the mariner experiences the nightmare of life and death, the nightmare life and death was she, who thicks man's blood with cold. The existence of such supernatural beings in the poem shows that humans should avoid being reckless in their actions and causing harm simply due to their rage. The punishment is relieved when the mariner and the seaman learn how to value nature. In the verse where the mariner started appreciating the creation of God, a spring of life gushed from my heart, and I blessed them unaware, sure my kind saint took pity on me, and I blessed them unaware there is a clear shift from the unfortunate events that haunted the protagonist. The appreciation for nature as the creation of God is the defining factor that alleviates the punishment because the mariner realizes what he does wrong, the self-same moment I could pray, and from my neck so free the albatross fell off and sank like lead into the sea. The punishment relieves because the mariner experiences the consequences of his actions and prays for being relieved from the hauntings of the spirits. Throughout the entire poem, there is a message of appreciation for nature as God's creation. The author emphasizes that when human beings take what nature offers without giving back, they are likely to pay for their actions. T'was right, say they, such birds to slay, that brings the fog and mist. In this way, the author wants to say that harming other natural creations of God will bring nothing but fog and mist, which many people associate with darkness and a lack of understanding of what the future holds. One cannot help to think about the resource crisis that the world is experiencing at the moment. 
People are used to relying on natural resources such as water, oil, and minerals. However, they forget that when all of it is gone, the earth will become impossible to live on. Nature in the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner Conclusion One can conclude that nature plays a dual role in the rhyme of the ancient mariner, which means that the environmental and spiritual messages should not be opposed to one another. The coexistence of life and death and polar spirits within the poem shows that the author sees them as integral parts of God's nature that humans should not overlook to avoid being treated in the same way as the mariner. Although such supernatural phenomena as polar spirits do not exist in real life, Coleridge used them as metaphors that represent the adverse outcomes of harming nature. Did you like this Nature in the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Taylor Coleridge sample? To get more works like this one, make sure to check out the free database of academic paper examples at ivypanda.com. You will find thousands of samples for all your study needs without even having to register.